All right, so are you ready to dive into another UFO mystery with me? Because I am. So today we're headed to Texas. To Texas. Yeah. yeah. But not to worry. This isn't about Roswell this time around. This is Stephenville we're talking about. Okay. January 2008. And let me tell you, things are getting a little strange in the sky. And that's what's so fascinating about this whole thing, right? I mean, you've got the small town in Texas, and people are looking up and saying, hey. Wait a minute. Yeah, what is that up there? This isn't right. And we're not just talking about, like, <laughs> one or two people, right? This is like the whole town is buzzing about this. Yeah, exactly. And thankfully, we've got Uncovering the Truth, the mysterious Stephenville sightings of 2008, to give us a closer look at all this. Yeah. And it really digs into, you know, who these witnesses were. We're talking ranchers, regular folks, and even a pilot. Oh, wow. With years of experience under his belt. And they're all saying the same thing. So what are they saying? Massive objects in the sky, totally silent, bright lights, zipping around and moving in ways that would make a fighter jet look like it was standing still. Okay, so that's where that pilot's testimony becomes super important, right? Yeah. I mean, think about it. When you're up in the air that much, you know what you're looking at. And for him to be stumped, that's saying something. It's huge. Yeah. And the source really breaks down these reports, too. It wasn't just like, oh, I saw a light in the sky. These were detailed descriptions. Okay, so like what kind of details are we talking about? Well, one witness said they saw this object that was so big it stretched from one end of their property to the other. Well, hold on. We're talking Texas-sized property here. Exactly. That's huge. That's what I'm saying. And it's not just one or two people saying this. You've got all these people from different walks of life all describing similar shape sizes, even those crazy movements. Yeah. That's hard to ignore. You know? I mean, I get what you're saying. Eyewitness testimony can be unreliable. Yeah. But when you have that many independent sources all saying the same thing, yeah. it does make you wonder. And here's the thing that really blew my mind. Okay, mm -hmm. It wasn't just the eyewitness accounts. They had radar data to back it up. Really? Yeah. We're not just talking about some blurry photos or shaky videos. This is hard data. M multiple sources all pointing to the same thing. And you know what they say? Numbers don't lie. Exactly. And that's where things get even more interesting because radar data isn't swayed by, you know, what someone thinks they saw. It's just cold, hard facts. So you're saying when that radar data lines up with what the witnesses are claiming. It makes you think. Yeah, it definitely makes you think. And if I'm remembering this right, the source mentions that the radar wasn't just picking up you know, your run-of-the-mill blips. This was different. Different hell. This was like objects moving in ways that just shouldn't have been possible back then. Really? I'm talking right angle turns at insane speed stuff that even the most advanced fighter jets couldn't pull off. Wow. So are we talking like beyond our technology kind of stuff? That's what some experts are suggesting. You're kidding me? No way. Nope. The source actually quotes these experts who analyze this kind of data for a living, and some of them were completely baffled. Really? Yeah, they were saying the flight patterns, the capabilities, it all pointed to tech that was beyond what we had in 2008. Okay, now that is wild. It's crazy, right? Yeah. So it really makes you wonder, what were these people actually seeing? I mean, was it some top secret government project? Or something else entirely. Right. Like, did somebody just hit the rewind button on reality or what? Because that's some next level stuff right there. Yeah. And it gets even weirder. Oh, I bet it does lay it on me. Okay. So remember how those sightings were happening in early January 2008? Yeah. Well, the source uncovering the truth goes on to say that the government initially denied any unusual activity in the skies over Stephenville. Classic. Right. The FAA basically said... Nothing to see here, folks. Move along. But we know that's not the whole story, right? Because we've got all these witnesses. Exactly. And not just regular folks, either. Even some law enforcement officers claim to have seen military aircraft in the area around the same time as those UFO sightings. Okay, so now we're not just talking about strange lights. We're talking potential military involvement, too. This is getting juicy. And that's exactly what the source points out. This whole deny-everything tactic often backfires especially when it turns out there's more to the story. Yeah, people start thinking there's a cover-up going on, like they're hiding something big. Precisely. And it just fuels all those conspiracy theories even more. So what happened next? Did the government fess up? Well, they did eventually admit to conducting training exercises in the area during that same time frame. Uh-huh. So it was military planes all along, case closed. Hold on. Not so fast. There's a twist. The military insisted that none of their aircraft could have been responsible for what those witnesses saw. Wait, so they're saying, yes, we were there, but no, we didn't see anything? What is that supposed to even mean? I know, right? It's totally confusing. And this is where the media frenzy surrounding the Stephenville sightings comes in. 
oh yeah, this thing blew up, didn't it? It was like Stephenville was the UFO capital of the world for a minute there. It sure seemed that way. Yeah. And uncovering the truth really digs into how that media coverage amplified everything. So how did the media play into all of this? Well, for one thing, it gave people a platform to share their own experiences with UFOs. The Stephenville sightings kind of broke the ice a little bit, and more huh. people, even those in positions of authority, felt comfortable coming forward with their own stories. Interesting. So maybe Stephenville helped shift the conversation from, are we alone, to like, okay, maybe we're not, but now what? It's definitely a possibility, and the source explores that angle as well. Because think about it, even after all the investigations, the analyses of eyewitness accounts, the radar data, we still don't have a definitive answer about what happened in Stephenville. That's what makes this whole thing so fascinating, right? It's like, we have all this information, but the truth is still out there somewhere. It's like trying to put together a puzzle, but you're missing half the pieces. Yeah. And that's what makes the Stephenville sightings so compelling. Even after all these years, people are still talking about it, debating it, trying to figure out what really happened. You know, it's funny because it really makes you think about how much we crave answers, even when it comes to things we may never fully understand. Absolutely. Uncovering the Truth does a great job of diving into all the different theories surrounding the Stephenville sightings. So we're talking everything from the completely logical to the totally out there. Yeah, you've got some people who believe it could have been experimental aircraft maybe even technology so advanced that it just seemed alien to those who saw it. Right, or some kind of secret project the government's been working on. Exactly. And then you have others who lean towards more natural explanations like atmospheric conditions playing tricks on people's eyes. But let's be real here. A lot of people think it was aliens. And I've got to say, after learning about all of this, a part of me can't help but wonder if they might be right. And that's the thing about these kinds of events, whether it's Stephenville or any other UFO sighting. They force us to confront the limits of our own knowledge. Because if even a fraction of what those witnesses reported is true, it means our understanding of technology, physics, even the universe itself, might need a serious overhaul. It's definitely a humbling thought. Uncovering the truth really drives that point home, reminding us that for all our advancements, there's still so much out there that we just don't understand. It's almost like Stephenville was this wake-up call, a reminder to look up from our busy lives and pay attention to what's happening around us. And maybe to be a little more open to the possibility that we're not alone in this vast universe. Definitely. And you know what? I think that's a good place to wrap up this deep dive into the Stephenville sightings. If you're as intrigued by this case as we are, we highly recommend checking out Uncovering the Truth for yourselves. The author does a fantastic job of presenting all sides of the story, letting you draw your own conclusions about what went down in those Texas skies. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one to finally crack the code on this mystery. Until next time, keep those minds open and those eyes on the skies, because you never know what you might see.